My name is Devon Daly. I was born in 1962. Why am I in Derby? Because my parents decided to settle in Derby. My grandfather came here in the early 50s and the rest of the family on my mother's side came over one by one and my dad came in the early 60s, met my mum and the rest is history as they say. I work a lot in radio and I've been doing that for a few years now and it came about really as a, a result of me being a, a young boy working in a shop on a Saturday whilst doing my main job as an apprentice and one day somebody came into the shop and said they wanted someone to come on the radio and play what was called at the time jazz funk which was kind of the music of the day and I said yeah I can do that no problem so I went in did a show they liked it and stayed there doing it for five years. Is music your passion, the reason why you end up doing what you're doing, or were there other interests that, that kind of sparked that interest in the media? Well, I remember at school they used to say um, something like, oh, it's Devon Dictionary, because I always used to like using big words, and I liked English, and I think journalism was something I did talk about as a 14, 15-year-old that I'd like to perhaps do, but eventually it was quite a few years after leaving school before I got back into journalism, or into journalism, I should say, because I left school at 16 and did an apprenticeship for five years with what's now Rolls-Royce. And then after that, I kind of combined work in radio alongside my apprenticeship work until when I left apprenticeship work, when I left engineering, sorry, I decided, yeah, it was time to actually try and follow the passion which I'd had for music and media. I think the way that the world we live in works is that if you see people every day who are sharing their stories with you and you're on the radio, it helps you to be able to feed some of that into the show. And so I think certainly from starting off doing DJing, I got to meet a lot of people in Derby and developed a nice contact base so that when I went into radio, I was able to use some of that contact base to tap into stories that people were interested in and shared those on the radio. And so that has evolved over the years from being, I suppose you could say, uh, a once a week scenario to at one time full time in radio and now back to more like a two or three day a week commitment. So things change, family come along and you have to reassign your priorities. But I've managed to maintain that passion for radio and music and combine the two over the years. What do you think, what are your thoughts of your community and how do you think you fit into that and they fit into a lot of what you do? The community in Derby is quite interesting because certainly when I was growing up I found that time spent as a young boy with people in the area I lived in, which was originally near the baseball ground, actually meant that you got to understand a lot about a lot of different faiths and different communities and so it was quite useful seeing people from different parts of the world in close proximity to get to know that you know people were different but not that different actually and I think when you were able to grow up like that it's a real help because as you get to 17, 18 and you start going out, going out to clubs, going out to um, college to do day release as part of the apprenticeship you meet different people but it's not as surprising to you because you've encountered that as a young person and so the community is very important in terms of getting everybody to see that yes you might say it a little different or you might cook it a little different but at the end of the day we're all hoping to get the same things whether it's you know as a young person with an older family or vice versa I think the main thing that's is different in terms of community and the work that I do now compared to when I started. I would say the way that people choose to get in touch with you has changed quite a bit because if you think about social media and things like that, they didn't exist. When I started out in radio, people still wrote with hand and letters to say, can you read out my event on such and such a date at such and such a place? Now, if I get a letter, I'm worried that I'm getting a bill. So that is definitely a change. Um, I think the other thing that is quite interesting about the way that people 
interact now is that before people would be, I think people would be more aware of how things in the Caribbean or things in Africa or things in other parts of the world outside Derby actually meant something to them even though they might, they may not have been there for a few years. Whereas now, I don't sense that same interest from younger people in the far-flung places that their, their relatives might come from. So if I talk about the West Indies and cricket to young people, some of them don't really know what I'm talking about. And I, as a young guy who grew up watching the West Indies, all right, they won a lot, so that helped. Um, it's quite sad to see that lack of awareness of the kind of cultural strength that the islands in the Caribbean in particular, which is you know, obviously important to me because that's where my family's from, uh, we're very strong and proud. What do you think you would like to see to make a difference or fill some of the gaps that have missed between the past and the present? The past is the past and I think we all yearn for that nostalgia about, oh, back in the day we used to do this and it was great. And it was great, but you know, the dinosaurs didn't survive because they didn't adapt. So I think the things that I would like to see transferred from the past to the present, um, basically is people understanding that if you help your neighbor, you may not get the help back from your neighbor, but somebody else in your community is gonna hear that you've helped somebody. and it might inspire them to do that same bit of help because whatever you're doing in life, you can't do it as an island. You can't survive as you want. You have to work together and find people that you think you can share those kind of values with. And from there, I think there's more power in the community as a whole because if people, like-minded people, get together and decide, yeah, we can make certain things happen. I think that could be a, a great way of doing what our forefathers did, which was come from the Caribbean, know nobody in this country, work together, throw partners, throw parties, shubins as they call them, and uh, develop such a strong network for us as children to grow up and feel, wow, you know, we've got next door neighbors who, if we misbehave, they're not just going to tell mum and daddy, they're going to come and clip us around the ear. And we didn't worry about that. We didn't feel bad. We thought, yeah, Mr. So-and-so is going to tell us off. We're going to, we must have done something wrong. So that's what I'd like to see transfer more from the past to the present. And the nod, that's a real thing that I miss. When I walk down the street as a black person growing up, I used to see people nod to other black people, whatever age. I'd like to see the nod come back. Young people, you nod at them now, they look at you like, what, you're gonna rob me? Bring back the nod, man. You mentioned earlier on about inspiring. You use that word inspire. So who or what inspires you? That's a question which, uh, whenever I used to ask, whenever I ask that to artists on the radio, I'm always expecting them to come out with something really profound. So now I've been asked the question, who inspires me? I'm not gonna come out with anything profound. I'm just gonna say my children, when I wake up in the morning, uh, they inspire me because I feel I have to make sure that I try and make a difference so that things are a bit, not easier, but uh, as good as they can be for them. And before I was a parent, I think my grandfather, and my father, although he wasn't in my life for a lot of the formative years, he certainly was around till I was 13 or 14. And he gave me a lot of confidence. I can remember as a five or six year old, he let me play on the blue spot gram, which if you're from the Caribbean, you know, there's a, there's a front room, you can't even go in it. So to go in it and go on the gram at five, yeah, that gave me a big, bo a big confidence boost. And, um... If there was to be a time capsule sent up to space and 100 years later somebody kind of comes across it, another alien race for example, what would you like to be in that time capsule regarding you 
and the work you've done, basically your legacy, what would you like to see or hear that's in that time capsule? Very simple. For me, if somebody found a capsule in a hundred years time and said, what's this guy about? I'd just like them to say, whether you liked him or not, he did his best, he tried to make a difference and we'll give the guy respect for that. I'd be happy with that. Community is collectivism.